today. We're 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 gonna um you know, sometimes I, I have a guest come on and we play a game called Who Said What and Why, where I read a quote and my guest tries to guess who said it and what they were talking about. But today I am going to read quotes and nobody has to guess who said these things because I'm going to tell you after I get done reading the quotes who said every bit of it, okay? who said every bit of it, and there's a reason that I am highlighting these quotes from this particular political leader in Moore County. And again, that reason ties back to Sand Hills Community College. So Sand Hills is going to be in the spotlight today on this podcast. Let me go ahead and start reading these quotes. This quote was taken from a letter to the editor written to the pilot a couple of years ago. Okay, um, and it, you know, the person who, who said it, uh, wrote it in a letter to the editor. Okay. Who do you think your readers are? The tattooed punks who work at Nature's Own? Well, that was one quote from that letter to the editor. And you know what? The owners of Nature's Own are, uh, veterans. Uh, it's a locally owned and operated organization. And I guess just because, uh, the person who said this uh, doesn't like tattoos. He decided to call these veterans, these people who are making our community better, he decided to call them punks. A little bit later in that same letter to the editor, he asked uh, the editor of the pilot, Mr. John Nagy, and you, John, apologizing to Robbins because it's a garbage-infested eyesore inhabited by subsidized entitlement addicts. So this same guy is saying that Robbins is full, full, full of entitlement addicts and that it's trashy. Good guy. Good, good guy. Okay. Now here I'm going to read a quote that was posted on this guy's blog that he runs, a blog post that he wrote. Same guy. Same guy. And in this particular instance, he was chastising two Moore County area churches, Brownson and Trinity for partnering together <clears throat> to uh, take basically what was a trip to Washington, D.C. to tour some of the more famous civil rights museums and monuments. And this is what he had to say about this. You're not even safe at church. This week, a 49-person delegation comprised of Brownson Presbyterian Church members, along with local black faith leaders, that would be Trinity, is traveling by bus to Washington, D.C., Brownson is a predominantly white church, but to my knowledge, has no history of prohibiting black or Hispanic congregants. Nonetheless, the stated itinerary of the trip focuses on visits to civil rights monuments and museums and daily Bible study to improve lines of communication within our community. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read some more of this quote. But before I do, I'm just going to say, you know, this guy's really seems to be upset that a black church and a white church are working together, you know, to visit some civil rights monuments. OK, he goes on to say the promotion of the bus trip was kicked off over a period of seven weeks from the pulpit and included a guest sermon by the author of a book entitled Waking Up White. It is an apologetic tome which she regrets her upbringing amidst white privilege. Left unsaid by religious leader, religious leaders, black and white, is the obvious reality that God determines the race of every one of us. Furthermore, American society has long accepted the existence of the black church, absent hint of malice, but God help anyone who identifies as a member of a white church. Okay, so this guy is obviously upset, obviously upset. All right, that this uh, traditionally white church and traditionally black church decided to get together and hold a series of Bible studies to open communication. And then all oh, the audacity planned a bus trip to Washington, D.C. to look at, you know, uh, visit civil rights museums and civil rights monuments. I mean, you know, seems to me like he's protesting just a little bit too much here. You know, he. Mm, OK. So then this same guy, and this came from a email newsletter that he writes and sends out every month, okay? He's talking about redistricting, and he's talking about the redistricting um, that took place, I believe it was in 2019, I believe it, you know, that's when the plans were made, and 
one of the things that the redistricting process in Moore County Schools did was it took students from Southern Middle School and um, put them in Cranes Creek Middle School. OK. And so, um, you know, we've had all this trouble with Cranes Creek Middle School, this manufactured outrage, this manufactured controversy from Cranes Creek Middle School. I've talked about it over and over again. I'm not going to talk about it right now. But um, the line from the right wingers in the community is that those kids from Southern Middle School uh, came into Cranes Creek Middle School and, and started causing all the problems. And as I've said before, if you talk to teachers, they'll tell you that that's not actually the case. It's also a fact that it wasn't just minority students or student of color who were taken out of Southern Middle School and sent to Cranes Creek Middle School. But, of course, that is the um, the narrative being pushed by the Bob Levy's and the David Hensley's of the world that, uh, for whatever reason, the Moore County Board of Education took a bunch of, let's just be honest, black students out of Southern Middle School and bust them to Cranes Creek Middle School. And, and you know, that's not exactly what happened, but that that is the narrative that they are pushing. And here is the quote from this same guy. It was an abject failure. Now, he's talking about uh, redistricting. A swarm of hostile students from Southern Middle School quickly overwhelmed Cranes Creek staff and turned the Carthage campus into a war zone. Now, what you need to understand is he is talking about minority students there. Okay, that, that's what he's talking about. And everybody else can gloss around that and, and pretend like they don't understand the code words. But he's basically calling minority students a swarm of hostile students, a swarm of hostile students, okay? Now, here's a quote from this same guy. He sent this in a personal message, which then got posted all over Facebook because of the nature of the threat. This message uh, was sent to a uh, election volunteer, a poll worker who was out there, I believe, campaigning for Frank McNeil. And, um, you know, this particular poll worker, who I'm not going to name, everybody who pays attention to politics knows knows who it was, Um had some words with a uh, someone who was out there um, stomping for Republicans. And, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a heated exchange, but, the, you know, there was no hands thrown. There was not no, no cussing. There was no threats or anything like that. But this particular man took it upon himself to send this volunteer, this poll, wor- poll worker who was out there doing his civic duty. He sent him this message. Hey, you bag of excrement. Try doing what you did this afternoon at Pinehurst at early voting again. I assure you, we'll need a lawyer and a chiropractor in short order, scumbag. Okay? This is a, a obvious, obvious, obvious threat. Okay? An obvious threat. Said he was going to need a chiropractor. Sent it in writing to a volunteer, uh, an election volunteer out there doing... Um, You know, a civic duty. Okay, let's see. There's even more. There's even more, believe it or not. Okay, this particular quote was taken from the Moore County GOP page where uh, this person is has control of that page, decides what gets posted and what doesn't get posted. And he shared a post from his own personal page that he wrote. And here is the post. And just so you know, this post was written about Simone Biles, the American Olympian, the gold medalist, the greatest female gymnast and, and probably gymnast overall that ever lived, one of the greatest athletes that ever lived. Uh, a woman who competed has competed on broken feet, toes. A woman who has competed with uh, kidney stones. A woman who w- has competed uh, hours after United States Gymnastic Association allowed her to be molested by a team doctor and did not intervene to help her. This woman who endured all that and competed honorably for the United States of America for years, carried the gymnast program on her back for years, multiple gold medals brought home from previous Olympics. But she decided that she was not mentally or physically able to compete in the last Summer Olympics, and so she withdrew from competition, and this is what this man had to say to her. Snowflake alert. Why are today's athletes such head cases? Americans never quit. Today on the Olympic stage, a very high-profile American defied that that sacred pledge. I was not in the right mental space, said the snowflake gymnast Simone Biles, as sponsors looked frantically for vomit bags. Okay. 
So I don't think that that really needs any um, explanation. Okay, this is another uh, quote from him taken directly from his personal Facebook page, his personal Facebook Facebook page. A couple of years ago during a Board of Education uh, meeting, it ended in a shouting match after uh, Robert Levy was chastised by a couple members of the board for comparing, um, you know, uh, programs put together to demonstrate the successes of Moore County Public Schools to Nazi propaganda. There was a shouting match, okay, uh, at the end of the meeting. And this is what this man posted on his personal Facebook page. Moore County School Board Chair Carter is a dictator who needs to be destroyed. A dictator who needs to be destroyed. Okay. I'm going to read one more. This is a direct quote from this man. He posted it on the official Moore County, North Carolina GOP social media page. The official social media page of the Moore County Republican Party. In this uh, post, there's a picture uh, that was taken in this man's home where he conducted a meeting hosted by him, participated in by the infamous Sloan Rackmont at Education First Alliance. Okay, Um, she uh, you know, we all know what they are. They're anti-trans, anti-American, anti-freedom group. But she held a meeting at at, um, this man's home and it was attended by. Uh, Board of Education members and community members. And this is what this man posted on his, on the Moore County Republican Party official social media pages. Education First North Carolina in Pinehurst on March 17th, inspiring Republicans to declare war on leftist educators and their enablers in local and state government. Declare war. Now, everybody knows who I'm talking about here. Every single one of those vile quotes came out of the poison pen of one Mr. Steve Woodward. One Mr. Steve Woodward. Mr. Steve Woodward, who claims to be a journalist, even though um, he doesn't seem to really understand how journalism works. Mr. Steve Woodward, who is a mover and shaker in the Moore County Republican Party and who um, writes the uh, uh, Moore County uh, GOP official blog called Resolve. This, all of these quotes came from Mr. Steve Woodward. And the reason that I am reading all of these quotes today is because, again, I told you I was going to talk about Sand Hills Community College. I told you I was going to talk about Sand Hills Community College. The Moore County Board of Education, in its inc- <laughs> infinite wisdom, has decided to appoint this man, Mr. Steve Woodward, to the Board of Trustees at Sand Hills Community College. There's a provision in the bylaws, a provision in the bylaws that says that the Sand Hills Community College Board of Trustees, in conjunction with the State Board of Trustees of Community College, can remove a member of the Board of Trustees if it can be proven, if there is evidence of disreputable or immoral behavior. So I want to ask my listeners, is calling minority students disreputable and immoral? How about sending a personal threat of physical violence to a volunteer poll worker? Is that disreputable and immoral? How about criticizing two community churches for daring to try to learn more about the civil rights movement and have better communications to one another? Is that disreputable and immoral? What about declaring war on educators and their enablers? What about calling teachers groomers and pedophile supporters, which he has done frequently? Calling the faculty at Sand Hills Community College groomers and liberal indoctrinators with no evidence whatsoever, none whatsoever. Okay. This is the man who is going to be seated on the Sand Hills Community College Board of Trustees making decisions about education, vocational education. Academic education, continuing education, a man who has contempt for the people who work at Sand Hills Community College, for the programs at Sand Hills Community College, 
And he can't even articulate why. He keeps talking about how, you know, Sand Hills Community College promotes a leftist agenda. Uh, when, since when was educating people? He's mad because, you know, uh, <laughs> Sand Hills Community College, uh, you know, acknowledges uh, differences in people and promotes diversity and promotes, uh, you know, um, acceptance. Well, of course he is because he doesn't want to accept anybody that doesn't agree with him 100% on every issue. And I don't know how many people think it's okay to send messages of physical harm to people just because you had a little political spat, or not even you, but somebody else did. Who, who agrees with that? Who thinks that's not immoral or disreputable? There are many more examples of Mr. Woodward's bad behavior. Many more. But I would ask the Sand Hills Board of Trustees, and I would ask the State Board of Trustees, how a man who has declared war on educators how a man has declared an entire community to be trashy and infested by drug addicted entitlement addicts a whole community that Sand Hills Community College is supposed to serve A man who has criticized churches for just trying to open up lines of communication and understand each other better. A man who has spoke out repeatedly against the rights of LBGTQ plus people to even exist because he claims they're all mentally ill and in need of lithium and they're all shrieking and they're all, you know... A man who has shown nothing but disdain for higher education and educators. How is he going to help lead Sand Hills Community College anywhere, anywhere but into the gutter? Immoral and disreputable. You know, I tend to think that if someone, a leftist, as he likes to call people, if a leftist had sent Mr. Woodward, such a graphic threat. Pretty sure there would have been some legal repercussions there. Telling somebody that if you encounter them and they behave in a way that you don't like, that they're going to need a chiropractor. Calling our teachers groomers. Calling LBGTQ people mentally ill. Calling the town of Robbins trashy and infected by entitlement addicts. Declaring war on our educators. Declaring war on individual politicians and saying they should be destroyed. I don't know. I mean, if you ask me, I think that that is all pretty immoral and disreputable. And I think the Board of Trustees and the State Board of Trustees really need to think about rejecting Steve Woodward. They have the legal authority to do it. Question is, do they have the balls?